I'm sorry, but you've given me quite a lot to think about. I need to be on my own. I hope you don't mind. Uh, oh, no. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Marina got to her feet. I I'll take my leave now. And with the stumbling steps of a frostbitten beggar, Marina departed. She hoped Tawa might call her back, but she never did. I'm gonna save real quick, cause it's been a hot minute since I saved. Uh. That night, Lorena curled up beneath her blanket and shivered. Her blanket seemed thinner and meaner than ever. Her mattress even more lumpen and misshapen. No matter how the young maid tossed and turned, she couldn't get comfortable. Thoughts raced through her head, more innumerable innumerable than the stars in the night sky. That violin is my most prized possession. It was as Emily had said, Tawa cared about that violin more than anything else, far more than she cared about Lorena. Lorena could still recall how icy Tawa's tone had been had been earlier that evening, down to the last spine-chilling syllable. Are you trying to tell me what to do, Lorena? Maybe she had just a little, but she had Tawa's best interests at heart. If Tao wasn't happy and Bly being paraded before Lady Leonard's guests like an exotic orchid, then why did she continue to stay here? Why didn't she leave? But Tawa, apparently, was content to endure all the curious stares and uneducated gossip in the world, so excuse me, so long as she could continue to cling onto her violin. Why? What? <sighs> Was Lady Whittier an important? Why can't I read anymore? Ah! Was Lady Whittier that important to her? Lorena didn't know. She didn't know because Tawa wouldn't tell her. Tawa never told her anything. Maybe Tawa didn't really trust her. Didn't really like her. Yeah, just steady work is always a good reason to stay, even if you hate it there. Now, why did that thought hurt so much? Lorena sniffled. Her eyes started to prickle. She wiped them with the backs of her arms, but yet more tears threatened to fall. She didn't want to cry. She couldn't bear it if she cried. She hadn't shed tears when Pauline shaped her, slapped her. Wow. Or when Lady Constance had made her scrabble about in the rose bush. She hadn't even cried when Ar Arthur Pickering had attempted to fondle her through the fabric of her maid's uniform. She was the daughter of Mabel Waugh, for goodness sake. Her mother's strong, indomitable blood ran through Lorena's veins. She could weather any storm. But, curiously enough, nothing over the last five months had stunned Lorena quite as much as this. Uh, so, I, we're in England. Um, I don't know if this is a made-up place or not. But, I know it's in England. And, it's... 18th century? 19th? I don't, I don't remember the time period. Hmm. I don't know. I don't remember. Curiously enough, nothing over the last five months had stunned Lorena quite as much as this. Lorena shook. Tears beaded in the corners of her eyes like dew on the underside of a daisy. She couldn't help herself. It hurt too much. So, she was crying. She hadn't realized just how much she had grown to care about Tawa until the older woman had rejected her. I think I should be on my own. But for how long? A few days? A week? A month? But by then, it would be too late. Theodora and Emily would have moved to London and Tawa would no longer be able to sell her violin. They'd both be trapped inside Bly, like figures within a snow globe, while the years piled about their shoulders. Getting older and sadder and tireder. That's, that, that doesn't sound like a word. Tireder. As they continued to drift apart. No. Lorena clenched her hand into a fist. Her nails dug into her skin. She didn't want that. She couldn't let that happen. But Tawa could be so very stubborn when she wanted to be, and Lorena didn't know how she could persuade her. She just made Tawa hate her more than she already did, than she did already. 
Her future really was murky. Marina wept bitterly, burying her face into her musty pillow. She didn't want to wake any of the other maids, least of all Pauline and Isabel. She didn't think she could fend them off. Not now. Not when everything hurts so much, and... Lorena? Uh, uh. Mary drew in a sharp intake of breath. So, her crying, no matter how muted, had managed to wake somebody after all. Or maybe they'd been awake this whole time. It was Ada. Lorena, are you alright? Lorena, her face wet and crumbled with tears, mumbled, I'm fine. It wasn't one of her wor most convincing performances. But Lorena... Ada's brow crinkled in the dark. It sounded like you were crying. I wasn't. Are you sure? Quite sure. Mostly. Maybe. I... Lorena shook her head. Why was she being so aloof with Ada, of all people? Tella might have turned on her, but Ada was her friend. Ada had been unfailingly kind to Lorena from day one, and Lorena owed her a lot. Without Ada, she wouldn't have settled down in Bly so quickly. She was the salve that made the barbed comments from Lady Constance and the mean-spirited jibes from Pauline and Isabel tolerable. If anybody could console her, it was Ada. Sweet, gentle Ada, with her round face and her button nose, now blocked up with the strange sickness of her voice. Wait. Now blocked up with the strange sickness, so her voice sounded unusually nasal. Oh, I need to change my voice acting. I didn't realize she was sick. Or, unless... Is it Lorena that's... Oh, yep, no, it's Ada that's sick. Well, maybe I was crying. Just a little. Um, d did something happen? Something or other always happens around here, but... In this case, probably not. I was just fooling myself, imagining there was ever something there to begin with. Ada's brow furrowed in confusion. Is this about Pauline and Isabel? Those two? Lorena snorted in disdain. Like they could ever make me cry. I won't let them. Then, Lady Constance? I wouldn't give her the satisfaction. But... Um, I heard about what happened the other day. With the porridge, I mean. It must have been scary. I'm a grown woman. Little girls throwing temper tantrums isn't scary. Though, at the time, Lorena had been rather unsettled. A bowl of porridge was a rather hefty projectile, and it had shattered with such a loud smash. You're braver than me. I get scared of everything. Strange noises in the night, and thunderstorms, and Lady Constance. Oops. Ada shook her head. I even get scared of ghosts. Ghosts aren't real, Ada. I know, but the idea of them is frightening, don't you think? Not really. This got far less momentful with one nasally participant. <laughs> Ugh. Sorry, not sorry. Well, you would say that. You're stronger than me. You didn't even get sick. Ada smiled at Lorena sheepishly. You've been working at Bly for far less than I have, but I think you're a better maid than I'll be, even though how to read and write. And look at what use that is. I think it's wonderful. R really? Yes, I respect you a lot. But you caught me crying in the middle of the night. I don't care. You're still one of the most incredible people I've ever met. You know, I bet Pauline and Isabel bully you because they're jealous of you. I'm not so sure about that. I think they bully me because they're vicious, boring people. But you're so smart and you can write letters and read books and things. I'm sure they can't. Well, maybe.
you have the strength to hold up two jugs of wine all day, every day. <laughs> so, you should cheer up. Ada smiled at Lorena encouragingly. I don't know who... Oh. I don't know who or what made you sad, but I'm sure you're better than they are. You're 100. No, 1,000 times better. Lorena dropped her gaze shyly. She wasn't used to being praised, and it was embarrassing. It was embarrassing, but... Maybe she should tell Ada how she was feeling. She didn't want to keep secrets. Not from her friend. If you're curious, um... I had an argument with Tawa. Tawa? But I thought you got on with her. She calls you my little Lori. She's complicated. We spend a lot of time together, but I feel like I don't really understand her. I don't think she wants me to. I just don't know what to do. Lorena sighed and curled up on her herself, like a flower blooming in reverse. Maybe she hates me. Why did I give her the wrong voice? Maybe she hates me. I'm sure she doesn't hate you. But she looks so angry. I wouldn't be surprised if she never talks to me again. Then she's stupid. Uh, Ada? Lorena looked at Ada with something akin to awe. She hadn't expected the quiet, malleable Ada, of all people, to speak ill of somebody else so firmly. Least of all, Taoa. She thinks she's smart, but if she has made you cry, she must be even stupider than I am. I'm sure she'll change her mind in a bit. You just have to give her time. Like a finicky cat? Exactly! You're one of the nicest people I know, and if you didn't upset her, I bet it was an accident. This thing will all blow over soon, and if it doesn't, then forget about her. Forget about Tawa? That was easier said than done. Something about the parlor maid made her linger in Lorena's mind even when she was far away. Like the cloying scent of lavender. It would be impossible, Lorena was sure, to ever truly forget about her. They'd made far too many memories together. I know I'm nothing special, really, and I'm always making silly mistakes, but... Ada looked at Lorena, hopefully, from beneath her eyelashes. No matter what happens, Lori, I'm, I'll always be your friend. Always. She spoke firmly, like a stalwart soldier. The conviction in her eyes took Lorena by surprise. You... You want to be? That's right. Only if you want to be my friend. Oh, Ada. Though Lorena's face was still damp, she found herself smiling all the same. It was impossible not to. Zoe, really? You really are a true friend. Ada's face flushed. L L Lori, thank you. Zoe, you're fine. It's not dinner time yet. Oh, no. I should be the one thanking you. I feel a lot better now. The two girls smiled at one another. Both requested in their own uncomfortable rectangular beds. Until Lorena, suddenly overcome with emotion, drew back her covers and shuffled to one side. Do you want to come in? Y you really want me to? You've been shivering for a while, and it's very cold tonight. I think you could use the extra heat. B but I'm sick. I don't want you to get sick, too. It's a chance I'm willing to take. B but... No buts. You're my best friend, and I just want to be with somebody right now. Somebody kind. I... I don't want to be stuck in my bed, alone with my thoughts. I can't bear it. Well... If you really want, I'd be more than happy to keep you company. Better put up that sensor dump. No, they're fine. They're legit friends. The artist behind the illustration should have held back a bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a little bit. That was all Arena wanted right now. Company. Being alone was far too depressing. I know, Zoe. Can you stop?
26th of May. Thursday. But no, it's supposed to be Woman's Wednesday game. Keep up with my stupid titles. Over the following week, the general malaise that had settled upon Bly began to wane. Even Lady Constance, who'd been going on like she were suffering from the plague, had begun to recover. <laughs> oh my gosh, Tail, you're not wrong. Even Lady... Uh, I heard that. The day slipped by and everything returned to the way it had been before. In fact, things were rather too much like the way they had been before. Tawa now seemed to regard Lorena much as she had done all those months ago. Lorena had first arrived at Bly. Oh no! No! She acknowledged Lorena with nothing more than a nod of her head when they passed in the hallway. That was all. Lorena tried desperately to think of something to say, but whenever she saw the older maid, her tongue seized up inside her head. She couldn't say a thing, and the clock kept on ticking. Thirty first of May, Tuesday. That sucks. The servants' quarters were pitch black. The sky beyond the singular window was filled with stars, glistening like diamonds about a lady's neck. But Lorena was in no mood to appreciate their beauty. All she could appreciate was how very tired she was. Being a maid had always been tiring work, but it had been even more exhausting than usual these last two weeks. Why was that? Maybe it was because Tawa no longer cared to speak to her. The Lorena had Ada to console her. It just wasn't the same. Ada had advised Lorena to forget about Tawa, but the unmade soon discovered that, that that was impossible. Lorena missed her. She missed Tawa terribly. She missed the embraces, the wistful glances, and all the kisses. But most of all, she missed feelings loved and wanted. She missed feeling loved and wanted. Okay. I'm trying my best, guys. The unmade sighed, and as she divested herself of her uniform, she folded it neatly, as was her custom, and set it at the foot of her bed. Whoops! I did not mean to scroll that way. Even that required too much work. Lori, are you alright? Just tired. I need some rest. Well, if you're sure... Marina slipped beneath her covers. They were icy cold. It was always cold in the servants' quarters, with its thin wall with its thin walls, thinner sheets, and window panes that were even more ineffectual at keeping out the cold air than a veil of spiders' webs. The single candle did l little to light the room. Marina turned, closed her closing her eyes, when Oh gosh, I gotta do this voice. <sighs> Lorena, are you still awake? Lorena scrunched up her eyes. She was awake, but she didn't want Pauline to know that. Not in her current state. Lorena, unfortunately, was not a convincing actress. I know you're still up. I heard you talking to Ada before I entered the room. How careless. She isn't as clever as she thinks. Um... Can't you leave Lorena alone? She isn't feeling very well, and... I'll give it a rest, Miss Piglet. You must have been sneaking current buns behind the cook's back. Uh, I wasn't. Like that matters. Move aside. The adults are trying to talk. Lorena sighed. She knew Pauline and Isabel would continue... Hectoring Ada until she gave them what they wanted. There was little point trying to resist. Ada didn't need to get dragged into this mess. Marina sat herself upright and fixed Pauline with heavy eyes. They looked hollow and empty in the darkness of the room. What is it? I had so many chores to attend to today. I'm quite exhausted. And how does that concern me? My, how heartless you are to show such contempt to your elders and betters. We're all maids here. That we are. But it hasn't been so very long since Isabel and I were under the weather. That was last week. You look fine now. 
Elarina doubted whether they'd been truly ill in the first place. I don't feel fine. I've been rushed off my feet and my back's killing me. Maybe you should lie down. That's what I plan to do. But, silly me, I seem to have forgotten something. Lorena's eyes narrowed. She didn't like the trajectory of this conversation. What did you forget, Pauline? It was my duty to bolt and lock the windows on the second floor. Then perhaps you should do it. I would if I could, but these legs aren't what they used to be. I'm still recovering from my illness, you see, and I don't want to push myself too hard. You've never pushed yourself in your whole life. That was what Lorena wanted to say, but she held her tongue. Her cheeks still remembered the sharp sensation of Pauline's palm, and she had no desire to make its acquaintance once more. <laughs> You've seemed a little out of sorts lately, Lorena, and I think a walk might do you good. So this is for my sake, is it? Naturally, as your elder, I want to look out for you. I know we're not the best of friends, but I do worry about your health. You've been looking awfully pale as of late, and you've been so very distracted. You should stretch your legs. It might bring some color back to your cheeks. If you feel peaky, maybe you should follow your own advice. If only I could, but these legs of mine, I'm afraid it's not possible. Pauline really has been working hard. The least you could do is help her. And if you don't wish to help me, you could always help yourself. Frankly speaking, your miserable face is ruining my mood. I think we'd all be better off if you left. It's not right, girls. Well, I don't know about that. Oh, I want to kick her so bad, Kane. You have no idea. Oh, yeah, Alamag. Absolutely. Super, super nice, senpai. I don't mind. Are you quite sure? Doesn't looking at her disagreeable face bother you? Not really. Then you have more patience than me. No matter how disagreeable Lorena is, she's still adorable. Oh! Effie with the... Oh! Oh! Effie! Yes! Effie! Yes! Uh, adorable? But she's a woman. I don't discriminate. Best. <laughs> I don't discriminate. Somebody get some shades on her. Boom. Boom. Right there. How very modern. And what about you, Lottie? What do you think? Dab on those bitches, right? <laughs> is not modern. And what about you, Lottie? What do you think? Well, the Swiss maiden of the Alps has been previously engaged in the lawn and involved process of brushing her golden tresses. Pause. She looked Lorena up and down, a small frown playing about her lips. And then she said, I think Isabel might have a point. Lisa Lott, you... You're supposed to have my back here. Lorena winced. It felt like the air had been knocked out of her lungs. You have been looking glum lately, Lorena. And my Uncle Rudolph always says walking is the best cure for a grieving heart. The hallways of Bly are not the Alps, of course. There are no gentians or cornflowers or asters, but I think it would be beneficial. Indeed, it would. Prettily spoken, Lottie. Lorena looked at Lisa lot mutely. The Swiss maiden was smiling without a hint of cruelty in either her face or her voice. But that made her betrayal stain all the more. Didn't she realize Pauline was trying to push yet more work onto Lorena's shoulders? Oh no, Kane, I absolutely ship Effie with Lottie. I think Effie and Lottie are adorable. 
<laughs> I'm not reading that out loud. Maybe the nuances of Pauline's words had been lost to Lizalot's fair ears. English was not, after all, her first language, and she didn't seem to understand the uniquely British art of sarcasm. Lorena opened her mouth. For a few moments, she thought about retorting. But it really was only a few moments. <laughs> she was too tired to try and defend herself. Even if she did, it wouldn't make any difference. Fine, I'll go. How lovely! Pauline's lips curved into a cruel smirk. You know, I might have a, to reevaluate my opinion of you, Lorena. When I first met you, I thought you were nothing more than a shameless hoyden. But now I see there might be a slither of goodness in you after all. Maybe she can be salvaged. Maybe. So long as you heed my advice, your life in Bly needn't be unpleasant. Let's keep working together in the future, Lorena. I'm sure we can become very good friends. It was a bitterly cold night and the wind rattled the window panes. Marina silently tracked down the hall, pausing to ensure each and every window was closed and bolted. Uh, can you guys give me, like, two seconds? Okay, sorry about that. I just realized I had missed a call and I needed to check and see if it was important. And it kind of was. Uh, shoot, now I'm getting a text from my brother. Okay. Sorry, guys. I A lot happened in, like, two seconds. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, the lady just left a message. I can... She said to call her back at 7, so it's fine. We're good. I can call her at that time, and we'll be fine. Lorena silently checked down the hall, pausing to ensure each and every window was closed and bolted. This was a task Lorena had always hated, and she hated it all the more when it was foisted upon her by Pauline. The familiar corridor seemed oddly elongated in the dark. Shadows pulled in every nook and cranny. <laughs> what if the hallway stretched on forever? Then she would never run out of windows to close or locks to bolt. It sounded like death without dying, some kind of living hell. But she was being silly. Wasn't she too old for such nonsense? She just had to keep walking. Ah. Uh. Marina stilled, turning her head. She could hear something rapping against the window panes. The rose garden, barely visible beyond the glass, was draped in the cool black and blue hues of the impenetrable night. The wind whipped the roses to and fro. Their leaves fluttered. Their flimsy, paper-thin petals were soon scattered. Bye, Redbeard. Have, be safe going home. Oh, it's rainy. Like, in the game. Like, actually on the screen. That's cool. I don't think it's done that before. <laughs> Ta-ta for now. <laughs> yeah. It was raining. The droplets of water fell against the window pane softly at first, but they quickly grew faster. The number, number of raindrops soon doubled, then tripled, then quadrupled. This was the kind of storm that could knock down walls and tear trees asunder. It was a good thing Lorena was inside, where it was warm, and the storm was outside, where it was not. Shaking her head, Lorena tore herself away from the windows and continued her work. At least, that was the plan. <gasps> Until she saw the ghost! Elise, the bratty child! The ghost was a tiny figure in a nightgown with large eyes, a snub nose, blonde hair, and a disdainful scowl. Lorena had never seen such a cross-looking little ghost, cross-looking little ghost before. Why are you staying around the middle of the night, you foolish maid? I could ask you the same question. Are you looking for the cat again? You have no right to ask me that. This is my house. I can do what I want in it. I know, but looking for a black cat in the dark would be quite a challenge. You should go back to bed. I couldn't sleep. There's something on my mind. And what would that be? It wasn't the kiss, was it? Just how much significance did that gesture have? 
I was playing in the garden with one of my dolls this morning. I think I left her outside. Lady Constance's lip curled upwards in a cruel sneer. Don't you dare! Don't you dare! 